Hi, in the previous video, uh, if you haven't watched it, please watch it first. I've showed how we can actually create our own model and we can extend the built-in user in Django. So we have user in Django that will handle all authentication and authorization. And then we can add it extra information uh, on top of that. And we can use our own model. So in our case, we have two new fields, age and bio. And then we have uh, one field that is actually linking us uh, to the built-in user in Django. And we have a fully working example when we actually can create a new users with a, a, this endpoint uh, so we can get users and have all the information from here. So it's a mixture of uh, information from a built-in user in Django and our own model. So that's everything working fine and also we have a way to post and create a new user to include that extra information. So that's enough for us to uh, have that extended. But in this video, I will show you how we can actually use these users and authenticate uh, them. And I will show you how we can have a token for that user to being able to log in uh, that users into our system. So let's say I would like to use this person here and I have a, a username three and password, sorry, I have username Christian three and password the same. I would like to be able to log in with that user and to have a token authentication. So we need to do a few more things to have the token authentication in our uh, Django REST framework. First, I need to go to the settings and I will need to add REST framework out token like that and then I, what I will need to do is I need to go to terminal and then I need to uh, I don't have any new migrations to make but I need to migrate so I will do migrate and then we have authentication token in our database so at this point we can actually use it so I have that added to installed apps and that's uh, ready for me. So what I will also need to do is I need to add something in our URL, a new path for allowing users to log in. So it's up to me how I will call it. Let's say I will do out like authentication and I will have that path for logging the user. So you will send to that path username and password and we'll have something out of there. So what we need to do is we need to create uh, some kind of view for handle this uh, request. So I will go to the views here and in the view, I can create uh, my new view and I will call it get, I can, you can call it whatever you like, get out token. So our goal is to get authentication uh, token and what I will do is I will uh, actually extend it. So what I need to do is I will need to import from REST framework authentication token views I will import obtain authentication token. So this is actually the function that we can use straight away. Uh, but I would like to have my own version of it. So what I will do is I will create my own version here and then I will extend whatever is there and uh, that will give me a way to uh, fully control whatever is passed there and whatever is coming out of it. So I will do definition post. So we'd like to override the built-in post method that is in the obtain uh, authentication token and have our own. So first I will do response and then I will do super. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm calling my super function here and then I will call self and then post. So request and then I do arcs and also quarks. So this is a standard thing. I basically override whatever is there and I call that function here uh, with the self and I have done the, the post. So this is basically 
doing whatever it was uh, done before. But in this uh, moment, what I can do is I can extend it and do my own, uh, own thing. So I can do token and then token objects and then uh, get and I can actually get key from response data and token. I also need to import that uh, token. So from REST framework, out token models, import token. So I have that uh, here. So I will just take the token from response data token. So I have a response data uh, token there and I will just uh, select the object from the database uh, token. So, uh, and it, it will be assigned to my variable here. So I can create an, uh, another variable and I will have users. And basically I'm just creating things I would like to have returned to me as in response. So I will have user and then I will do objects and then I will also use get. So I'm just collect, collecting the data. I will get it based on the ID that is uh, from token user ID. So basically I have that token uh, coming from the response and it will be included there and I will show you how it works in a second. Uh, so basically I will just select the data from the database the token and I will select the users based on that token. So that token has an information uh, uh, information about the user and I, will, I can select the user from the database based on that. So that will give me a way to put back in a response whatever I like. And usually when you are logging, what you would like to have in return is the token itself. So we have that here. And also it might be handy to have the user in. So you just log in with username and password, but in return you might have much more information there. And we will collect that information from the database here and we can return it. So I can actually use a user serializer. I can call it whatever I like. I will, I will put it like this or let's do a Python way. Uh, so user serializer, I can do user serializer like this. And what I will pass here is the user, my object from the database. And I, send, uh, I can pass many false. So I will have only one. So I have user here and then here at this point, what I can do is I can return a response. Of course, I need to import that response. So from, from REST framework, response, import response. So I have that response and in here, what I can do is I can return any object I like. So I will return token and that's gonna be my token as I have it here from the database. And that will be token key because in the database we have much more information uh, from the token. So the key is the actual string that you will need to pass to uh, to use it. So that's that's our token. And on on top of the token, what I can do is I can also return the user information. And that's the goal here. So I will have user serializer data uh, like that. So this is my new method. I'm overwriting whatever was here with, with this line and then I select the token from the database based on the token that is returned from uh, this obtain authentication token. I select the token from the database. That token uh, actually contains more information about, it's not just a token as a string, it also it, uh, contains the information with the, uh, for what user that token is used for. And we can select the user from the database, we can serialize it that we can use uh, this serializer we have here with all that fields here, we can return it here. So basically I will just uh, specify the new 
object and I can put whatever I like here. But that, that will give, an, give us an option to return the user and the token in the same time wherever you are logging. So we have a new function here. I will go back to here and from the views I can import that function and then here I can do as a view. So basically I have my new method and it's on the endpoint of authentication. And what I need to do is I need to pass username and password. And in return, I will have uh, all that uh, returned to me. Okay, so let's uh, go back here to the postman and let's try to use it with a Christian tree. So I have uh, out, that's my new part. And then I will post it. So what I would like to do is I will post uh, form data and I can have uh, username Christ, uh, Christian3 and password. This is what you, you will usually do for when you want to log in. So you have authentication endpoint and then you pass username and password and you would like to have something in return. So whatever is built in uh, here in the obtain authentication token, you will have the token return. But we extend it and we use uh, some extra fields to it. So let's test it now. So we have that. So we have the token and then we have a user and everything is working the way we expect it. So as you can see here, that's one object that we included in, uh, in here. So we have that token key and this is user serialized user from the database. And if you go take a look here in that user, you have user ID, username, pa uh, person and all that info information. So you don't need to ask for uh, uh, Django once again for your user with that token because whatever you log in, you will have everything ready for, for you. There's one more thing that you need to do. So if you go uh, back here to the home, you have token. So I have a token here and I have token for this, uh, this user that has been created automatically for me wherever I, I log in. So if I will go back here, I can do a Christian2 and Christian2. And if I will save it, unable to log in, log in with provider credentials, uh, maybe I haven't used it this way, I don't remember. So let's say users. And we have Christian2. I think the username and password was the same. So authentication. Let's try it again. So I have Christian2. And able to log in with provided credentials. So let's try Christian and Christian. Oh, the, the, the reason why I couldn't do it with Christian2 is because that user has been created with a wrong method. So uh, back then we use a method for in the serializer, we use not create user, but create, and the password has, hasn't been hashed. So basically it cannot be unhashed now. So it can be uh, decoded now because it is stored in a database as a simple string. So I can't really log in with that user. That was a bad user uh, created and that's it. So basically whatever I, I kind of have the authentication for the user, the token is returned to me. And you can see here, uh, if I will refresh it now, I have two tokens. So basically whatever I uh, authenticate, the token will be created for me, but I don't have to wait or until the authentication, because sometimes I would like to have a token automatically create whatever I create a user. At the moment it's not happening. So you need to create a user and then you need to authenticate to have that token. You might need that token. You, you might uh, have an option to register your users on your website straight away and you will have that token available for you to make an extra cause. So what we can do is we can go back to our uh, create method and we have it user safe here. On top of that, what we can do is actually we can create a token directly here. So token objects, and then I can have create 
that needs to be here. So token objects uh, create, and then I will create that for a user that we have here. So we have already user because we've created in the database, and then we have that user here, but I need to also import that uh, token. So what I will do is from REST framework, out token, models import token. And we have that. So if I will save it here, I also go here and let's create a new user. So I will do users post and I will do the same as we've done it here. So I will do four and four and let's say that's 14 and save it again. So I've created a new user here and what I'm expecting if I will refresh it here I already have a token for this one. So I don't need to authenticate that user to have the token. This is automatically cre being created for me, whatever I do that here. So we have that uh, option here, but this method actually creates three different things. So it creates a to uh, token, it creates a user and creates also a person. If we have that kind of functionality built in, if one fail, we don't want to create a user if the person fail. We don't want to have the a person if the user fail and so on and also the token. So what we can do actually in that case, we can use transaction atomic. So transaction atomic. Uh, we actually need to import that first. So I can do from Django DB import transaction and we have that transaction atomic. What does it mean? Basically it means if one of this uh, fail, basically the everything will be rolled out uh, back to the normal state. So if uh, the person won't be created, the user will be rolled back and the user won't be created. Same with token and so on. So this needs to be created three of them. Uh, otherwise, everything will be rolled out and we can use and uh, leverage the transaction atomic for that. So this is a ready and finished example how we can use our built in user in Django and how we can uh, use it for authentication and authorization, how we can use it for a token and also how we can extend it with our own model. We can add here any information we'd like to have for that user and we can use it along with the built-in user in Django. I hope this was uh, helpful. But I know many people ask how to implement this, how to make it uh, very robust and how to make it flexible enough to being able to save both in the same time and being able to use them whatever you need to use. Well, with this setup you have the full control. What we would you like to store it and what would you like to have it return in any of the uh, endpoints. If you did like this uh, video please do subscribe on my channel because I will try to put more uh, videos like this in the future so we'll be up to date with whatever is uh, uh, coming on my channel. Thank you.